Hey there, what's up, it's Avi. In this video I will cover the Claren plate build that you can use in solo dungeons, which is a pretty cheap build that has insane clear speed. This is a build with a lot of damage and you will simply be running through the monsters and delete them as you go. Just make sure you don't delete yourself by accident since this build does use the Spectre Jacket. Epic and legendary bosses can be a bit more tough to kill with this build, but for that I share some tips with you throughout this video to make sure you leave no fame or chest behind. And it's of course good to know some alternative options for items that you could consider in this build, which will also be covered later in this video. As you might know, with the recent changes to solo dungeons, in which the entrance disappears after some time, you don't have to be as worried about getting dived anymore, which means you can go with more PvE focused builds, which make for faster clearing. Which is why I really wanted to share this build with you, although I already covered the Carving Sword as a sword option for solo dungeons before. The Carving Sword is still very good to do solo dungeons with, and definitely a viable choice even now. So if you are interested in that, or in a very different weapon altogether, you should check out my playlist with builds for solo dungeons in the description below. Before we get to the build, if you like this video, make sure to throw a thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications for my YouTube channel. You can also connect with me through Twitch or Discord, which are both linked in the description below. Now let's get going with the Claren Plate build. The Claren Plate build for solo dungeons consists of the following items. A Scholar Cowl for the helmet, a Spectre Jacket for the armor, any of the leather shoes for the boots, the Claren Plate itself of course, accompanied by a Mist Color in the offhand, and a Tetford Cape. Since you are farming fame, you could consider a satchel instead of a regular bag for more fame gain. You want to have soups for health regen with this build and a stack of tier 4 potion potions for the boss fights. In this build your weapon, cape and even armor make for damage. Your helmet's primary role is energy regen and also provides extra resistances for the tougher fights. And your boots and offhand help with cooldowns. Your food provides sustain and your potions help with killing bosses. So you pretty much get everything you need covered with this build. On top of that, the build is pretty cheap since it doesn't use any crazy expensive artifact items. Right now you can get a tier 7 equivalent set for about 250k without the cape, which in my opinion is pretty cheap for what this build has to offer. So what is it that this build has to offer? Let's talk about that in the build breakdown. Starting with the Claren plate, you have two options for your Q. The Heroic Strike and the Heroic Cleave. Whilst you are clearing the dungeon, take the Heroic Cleave since it does AoE damage, and when you are up against bosses, swap to Heroic Strike for more single target damage. Both of these provide Heroic Charges, which increase your movement and attack speed, and also affects the amount of damage your E skill does. So make sure to keep your stacks up as you go through the dungeon. On your W, you want to have Parry Strike, which is good for the short immunity window, but also to reflect a lot of damage back at the attackers. On top of that, the Parry Strike also does some AoE damage at the end of the channel. If you didn't unlock Parry Strike yet, consider Splitting Slash which you unlock at level 40 for some extra AoE damage or any of the other skills for the W. I would personally either go with Interrupt for more damage or Iron Will for more utility. I think this one is very personal so choose to your liking. However, once you have it unlocked, your best pick is simply Parry Strike. As for the E on the Claren Plate, you have the Mighty Swing, a skill that lives up to its name. The Mighty Swing does damage depending on the amount of heroic charges you have active, which are the stacks you build up by using your Q. Make sure to use the mighty swing with 3 stacks for maximum damage. Don't be afraid of spamming the skill every time you have 3 stacks and it's off cooldown. Since it has pretty low cooldown and is a big part of the damage that makes this build so good. The passive you want to take on your Claren plate is deep cuts for more DPS. If you prefer any of the other passives however, that's completely fine as well. Since you will be spamming your Q and E, you will have energy issues with this build. Which is why you want to use the Scholar Cal. The energy shield of the Scholar Cowl increases your resistances whilst it's active, which is nice to have during bigger packs and difficult boss fights, but more importantly makes you regain energy every time you get hit. So you should never be out of energy, although this build is pretty energy hungry. The passive you want on your Scholar Cowl is aggression for more damage. The self-ignition of the Spectre Jacket does a lot of damage to monsters and is a big factor in the deleting of said monsters. This skill is toggle and if you don't toggle it off, it will keep going for about 20 seconds or more likely until you get knocked. You take 2% of your own health as true damage every half a second whilst this skill is active. Make sure to turn it off in between packs or when you are low on health. Most importantly, you want to be careful with using this skill during boss fights. I would personally recommend to swap to Inferno Shield for the boss fights instead. As for the passive on your Spectre Jacket, take the Quick Tinker for cooldown reduction. Any of the leather shoes will do with this build, since all of them have the refreshing sprint skill, which is what we are using them for. 
The refreshing sprint will give you a movement speed boost for 3 seconds. And during this time frame, reduce your cooldown slightly. So simply use it as often as possible to speed things up. And once again, the quick tinker passive for cooldown reduction. The remaining two items in this build are the mist color in our offhand and the Tedford cape. You take the mist color for even more cooldown reduction so that you can use all your skills even quicker and more often. And you take the Tedford cape for even more damage since you don't need any of the other cape's abilities with this build. And that is the Claren blade build breakdown. Now that we got that covered, let's talk about the struggles of this build. You won't have any problems clearing the monsters, but you might struggle a bit with the stronger bosses such as epic or legendary ones. I will now share some tips with you on how to overcome these struggles. Since self-ignition does damage to yourself, it's not wise to use this ability during tougher fights, which is why I earlier recommended to change the Inferno Shield for these fights instead. Another thing you could do is to change your armor altogether during these fights. You could bring an extra mercenary jacket with you and swap out your spectre jacket when necessary. The mercenary jacket has the Bloodlust skill, which provides sustain in the form of healing, which the current build doesn't have. Three other items you could bring for sustain are the Guardian Helmet, any of the plate boots for the rejuvenating sprint, and healing potions. No matter what your build is, it's always a good idea to bring a couple healing potions just in case. If you wish to go a bit more expensive, but highly effective, you could also take the cultist rope with you as an extra item. And finally, possible adjustments you can do to this build make it even cheaper or for alternate playstyles. First of all, you can use a regular cape instead of a Tedford cape if you wish to go more budget. The Tedford cape simply adds a bit more damage to this build, but even without it you got plenty of damage already. If you want to use any of the other capes, that's completely fine as well and fully up to you. Vector jackets are made from relics, which means that if they get buffed, they might become more expensive. You can simply use a stalker jacket when that happens. If you aren't comfortable with doing damage to yourself with this build, you can even use a stalker jacket from the get-go. Both the Stalker Jacket and the Spectre Jacket do AoE damage around you, in which the difference is that the Spectre Jacket does more damage to monsters, but also does damage to yourself. If you wish to use a different offhand, such as the Muzak or Crypt Candle for even more damage, in trade for cooldowns, that's completely viable as well. If you want to use any of the other boots because you wish to level them, or see more value in what they provide, you can replace your leather shoes. You will simply be trading away a little boost to cooldowns for whatever new effect you gain. And that brings us to the end of the Claren Plate build for solo dungeons. I hope this video brought value to you, and I really hope you enjoy playing this build. Let me know in the comments what your favorite build is for solo dungeons, and perhaps I'll cover it in one of my next videos. Make sure to write out the details of your builds if you share it. Once again, make sure to like, subscribe and turn on notifications, and perhaps say hi on Discord or Twitch sometime. I wish you good luck in your adventures, and I'll see you next time. So lame, can I have some cash in a ride down to the arcade?